Hello and welcome back to The Stronghold. It's time once more for us to look at one of our new player experience decks and figure out how to make this deck better on a budget. And today I've got a very good one for you. Uh, recently we have talked about our blue black control deck and to be frank we didn't have a lot of success trying to upgrade that deck. Uh, the reality is we're still kind of waiting for that to happen. Uh, so moving up the list, today we're going to talk about the Mono White Keep the Peace deck and we're going to do a zero wildcard upgrade that uh, frankly is going to knock your socks off. But before we get into all that, let me take this opportunity to invite you to subscribe to the channel. See, back in January of this year, I set a goal of having 100 subscribers before the end of the year. And boy, have we come a long way since that time. And while I may be doing a lot of the work, I can't do it without you. You see, this isn't one of those huge YouTube channels that gains or, or loses a thousand subs in a day and hardly notices. Around here, you matter. Just like all these folks here matter. See, thus far we've got up to 81 subs out of our goal of 100. And while I know they're not all listed here, these are the folks that have answered the call and made their uh, subscription to the channel public information. And I want to take this opportunity to not only invite you to join the community if you have not done so already, but thank all of these fine folks because around here, my audience matters. It's what shapes the channel, it's what I drive for. And one last thing, I'd like to do something cool when we do hit that goal of 100 subscribers. Problem is, I don't really know what to do and, and have very few ideas. So if you have a moment and you have a thought, Comment it down below on what you think we should do to celebrate our goal of 100 subscribers being reached. Now, what were we talking about? Oh, right. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of the decks, make sure to use promo code Parallax Potion as you see it on the screen. Uh, that will not only give you a free copy of Revitalize, which for most of you will be your fourth copy, but it also gives you access to a very cool art for this particular spell uh, that, in my opinion, is better than the current standard art. So again, make sure to use promo code Parallax Potion in the Arena store and get not only a cosmetic, but also a copy of the card. All right, so let's start this discussion with what we are given on Mono White, and uh, that is Keep the Peace. Uh, now, this deck has the same general shortcoming of uh, nearly all of the particularly mono-colored decks. Uh, that is, it's trying to be all things at once instead of being one thing that it's really, really good at. Uh, while there is very strong themes in here for life gain uh, and benefiting from that life gain, uh, you also have cards in here that allow you to, to draw cards um, or to turn your deck into an aggro deck. Um, or uh, again, uh, doubling down on aggro. Uh, you also have generally weak spells like Spirit of the Guardian. Uh, Sarah Angel, as is, is much as I hate to say it, uh, when I first started playing Magic, this card was the nuts. In fact, it was, it was the win condition in, uh, in blue-white control. Because uh, you would stick that and you had a defender and an offense all in one and counter spells to protect it. I mean, it was, it was just insane. Uh, Angelic Reward, um, hey, it's an aura. Uh, don't get two for one, that's a thing. Uh, Confront the Assault, uh, again, just kind of uh, a weak spell. It's over-costed, 
and it has nothing to do with the life gain sub theme going on. Uh, Bond of Discipline, uh, while it does support uh, life gain by giving all of your creatures life link, uh, Lifelink doesn't stack anymore, and uh, a lot of the creatures in our deck should already have Lifelink if that's the purpose of the deck. Um, so all in all, it, like I said, this, this deck just suffers from the same sort of thing that all of the monocolor decks do. It's trying to do too many things at once rather than doing one thing really, really well. So let's see what we can do about that. So to improve the deck, let's get all about that mono white life. I uh, went ahead and made the changes rather than going through card by card. Uh, we pulled, uh, this, is, this is just pulling from your existing new player experience collection, assuming you haven't opened a single pack, draft a single card. This is literally zero wild cards, but that doesn't mean no rares, no mythics. Um, so we, uh, we kept that charm stray in there, uh, for lifelink, this is, this is really bread and butter and, uh, just having one on the field is pretty good. Uh, getting a second one on the field is pretty nuts. Uh, cleric class, uh, is, is really good for life gain. It doesn't prop a second trigger, uh, but it does make your triggers more powerful and you want to hit that level two, uh, just as soon as you can, because when you gain life, you put a plus one, plus one counter on. And some of your creatures are doing that anyway, so uh, it, it really starts to stack up and get kind of nuts. Uh, the level 3, I really don't use all that much because, uh, frankly, late game is not something this deck generally has to do. Uh, people have either lost or conceded to the coming onslaught uh, long before you generally have 5 mana. Uh, Portable Hole, just really good removal. Um, it's a little situational, but very good. Uh, Hollow Priest, again, from the original Mono White deck, is, is um, well, Harry, this is what you would call a beater. And uh, it, it just gets bigger. If they don't deal with this thing right away, it's, it's going to get out of hand, and they're going to have to use some premium spot removal or just wipe the field. And uh, when they're having to do those things against a budget deck, uh, you're probably going to win in the long run. Uh, Impassioned Orator is uh, one of those great cards from the original Mono White deck. And the reason this is so good is because it procs that life gain. Uh, so for instance, uh, you could turn one Charm Stray into a turn two Orator. And then on turn three, you land a Hollow Priest, it gets a plus one counter from the Orator, you swing with your Charm Stray, it gets another plus one counter, so it, it basically just came into play, and it's already a 3-3, three, three, and uh, it's only going to get bigger from that on next turn. Uh, Luminar Aspirant is one of those rares that uh, if you're playing white and not playing this card, I need you to explain to me why. Uh, the plus one, plus one counters for this deck is really phenomenal. Uh, pacifism, basic general removal. Uh, we don't need to kill their creatures, we just need to keep them out of combat, and that's what pacifism does. Uh, revitalize, maybe one of those cards that ends up getting cut later in uh, more robust versions of this deck once we're able to draft. But for now, uh, gaining three life, procking a life gain trigger, and drawing a card is pretty darn good for three life. Uh, Rune Assistance, uh, we don't have a lot of creatures in this deck that uh, we want to have lifelink and don't, but there are a few, uh, particularly the Hollow Priest, that just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, but be forewarned, that also puts a bit of a target, even more so on Hollow Priest's back. Um, generally, that might be better to say for some of your higher-end things that we'll talk about here in a minute. Story Seeker, a 2-2 for lifelink. It just doesn't get any better than that. Uh, Celestial Unicorn is Hollow Priest, but just better. That's right, we now have seven creatures from our new player experience that get bigger every time you gain life. Uh, it's, it's just absolutely absurd. Uh, Elite Spellbinder lets you deal with a problem before you have a problem. Um, 
basically by uh, extending the time clock on that by two mana and uh, in a way it buys you two turns before they sometimes can get off that premium removal and by then it's just too late. Uh, Expel is uh, just a nice removal spell and it exiles which can be really really important uh, particularly now in black and green doing uh, so many crazy graveyard shenanigans. Uh, Core Celebrant is a, another uh, Impassioned Orator type card, um, but it only triggers... Um, uh, oh, no, actually, I, I take that back. I started to say it only triggered on other clerics, but it does, in fact, trigger for everything. So uh, it just allows you to continue building your board state. He makes a decent blocker. Uh, and if you do give him lifelink uh, through something like Rune of Sustenance, now he's blocking and procking life gain triggers. Uh, Righteous Valkyrie is a 2-4. Um, if you have 7 or more life than your starting total, all of your creatures get plus 2, plus 2. Um, so the, the beating will continue until morale improves. Uh, Skyclave Apparition, um, this is just fantastic removal um, and a 2-2 two, two. and now they have to decide well do they deal with the Apparition um, with the removal or are they dealing with something like a Hollow Priest or an Orator or a Celebrant uh, or a Unicorn. Uh, it just puts more targets out on the field and makes them spread the removal even wider to the point where you're going to have more difficult choices than they have removal. Uh, one card that I enjoy putting in here from our new player experience is uh, McKenna Stampede as an overrun effect. Um, it is sorcery speed, so you can't uh, surprise them and, and use it as a combat trick, uh, but a lot of times uh, that lets you get in for lethal damage or uh, to, to force really bad blocks. And uh, it's also a land if you should happen to need it. Uh, we are running 20 basic planes, uh, but pushing that up to 22 sometimes lets you do things uh, a little more consistently. And the last card in the deck that I'm recommending is uh, Valkyrie Harbinger. You won't often get to six mana in this deck or need to get to turn six. Um, but if for some reason you're playing a control deck or uh, maybe a mirror match for life gain, uh, the person who lands this card ultimately is going to win the game because not only does it have flying and lifelink, so it's evasive, it procs your lifelink triggers, uh, it increases your life total, but then it also starts creating 4-4 flying vigilance creature tokens so uh, now you have better defenders uh, and better offense through more flying creatures. So guys, that's the deck. Um, it's really very solid for a, a new player experience only deck. And uh, I think if you take this first spin, you will enjoy racking up those daily wins and challenges with a deck like this. Wait. What's that? You, you didn't catch all that? Well, Matt wants you to know the links are in the doobly-doo. And with all that having been said, please take this opportunity to like, comment, and subscribe. It is the budget way to support this budget channel because it doesn't cost you a thing. Do it for Graham. Do it for the algorithm. Do it for the iced coffee. And until next time, I'll see you in the arena.